selections, as the name suggests, restrict your drawing operations to a certain area on the canvas. They bound your brush strokes, your filters, or the transforms you may apply on your layers. Technically speaking, selections and masks or even alpha channels are the exact same thing. And they work the exact same way. In case you don't know it, a selection is just a black and white image. In Krita, there is an option called the Global Selection Mask, which allows us to visualize our selections as a new mask layer. When I select something, you can see that the selected pixels are white and the unselected ones are black. This grayscale image is used by the application to know where to apply a certain effect. Mathematically speaking, it works like that. Grayscale values are stored by computers as percentages. Black is 0 or 0% and white is 1 or 100%. Grays can take all sorts of values in between those two. These percentage values are then used to change the weight of your drawing operations on the canvas. Black leaves the existing pixels unchanged and white applies a full opacity effect on your pixels. That's quite technical, but understanding masks and manipulating them is the bread and butter of lots of time-saving game art tricks, of game shaders, and of fundamental procedural game art techniques. For now, if you have to only remember two things, these are selection equals opacity mask equals alpha mask. They work the same way. And selections are grayscale images. Now, in this video, we are going to focus on the most important selection tools. These are the Rectangular Selection Tool, the Outline Selection Tool, and the Contiguous Selection Tool. All that I'm going to say about the Rectangular Selection Tool applies also to the Ellipse Selection Tool. Let us start with the Rectangular Selection Tool. You can access it by pressing Ctrl R on your keyboard. It is used to draw rectangular shapes, but also to box select parts of your paintings, like full sprites on your canvas, for instance. To draw a selection, you just have to click and drag on the canvas. The place where you click will define the starting point of your selection, and the point where you release the mouse will define the ending point of your selection. With both the rectangular and the ellipse selection tools, there are some modifier keys which allow you to transform your selections while you are drawing them. For those manipulations to work, you have to keep modifier keys down while you are drawing the selections. Not before, not after. To constrain the proportions of your selection, you have to press the shift key and keep it down. If you want to use your starting point for your selection as its center instead of its corner, you have to keep the control key down. And to move the selection while you are drawing it, you have to keep the alt key down. It will snap the closest corner of the selection's bounding box to your mouse cursor. Let's now talk about the outline selection tool. With this one, the selection is defined by the outline you draw with your mouse cursor or with your tablet span. It is best used with tablets. In my experience, you will get jagged edges with the mouse. It is used to select elements like the rectangle selection tool, but it offers more flexibility. It is often used to cut limbs in production, to move or to copy objects around. There is no default shortcut assigned to it, but it's a very important tool. I recommend that you give it one. I'm using the Q key myself uh, at the top left of my keyboard. Editing keyboard shortcuts is explained at the end of this chapter in the last video. And if you want to select this tool with the mouse, in the toolbox, click on the bean-shaped icon. This tool is pretty straightforward. There are no important options to know about it, apart from the ability to deactivate the anti-aliasing if you are doing pixel art in Krita. But talking about this outline selection tool is a very good occasion to talk about how to add, subtract, and intersect selections together. To apply any of those three operations, you have to keep a modifier key down before you start drawing the selection. If you keep your shift key down, your selection will be added to the existing selection. If you use the alt key instead, your selection will be subtracted to the existing selection. And if you keep both the Shift and Alt keys down, 
your selection will intersect with the existing selection, which is also called multiply. The two selections will be multiplied together. Those modifier keys work with every selection tool. You can, for example, draw a rectangular selection, switch to the outline selection tool and subtract some random shape to it. We have one last selection tool to talk about. This is the contiguous selection tool. This one selects an area surrounding the pixel on which you clicked. It's based on the similarity of surrounding colors. The size of the selection is determined by the fuzziness parameter in the tool options. If the fuzziness value is high, the tool will select colors that may be quite different from the pixel you clicked on. On the other hand, if the value is small, the contiguous selection tool will only aggregate colors that closely resemble your initial selection. This tool is used to easily select a colored area on your painting, like the hair of your character, the shadow inside of their ear or anywhere on their body, any area that is pretty uniform in terms of colors and values. We will talk a bit more about it later, but there are many ways you can use and combine those selection tools together to make your job painting any kind of character much easier. For now, I just want to remind you of one last option. At the bottom of the screen, in the status bar, on the very left of it, you have a little icon. When you have a selection active, if you click on that icon, it will change the way the selection is shown on the screen. It will switch from what we call the marching end selection to a red overlay. This overlay is really useful because it allows you to visualize the transparency in your selection. With the marching ends mode, you can't visualize smoothness in your selection. In the next video, we will see how we can flood fill our selections and outlines with colors.